application of a whole string of generalized uh, symmetry. And then we will also discuss uh, regarding the simplest dynamical application to some uh, superparticle model with tensorial supercharges. And in fact, it is a, a series of work that started like a few years ago, and these are the, the papers produced in this, uh, in this topic. Uh, first, we started collaboration with the peers. We have a couple of papers where we introduced the notion of a Cotonionian theory, which is uh, perhaps related with some uh, uh, attempt to define some exceptional theory of everything, like uh, good formula, some good like uh, Ramon. And uh, in the last year paper, we introduced also we proved how to uh, how to make the Euclidianization of the uh, theory and the analytical continuation. And this was based, in fact, in uh, some of these uh, uh, generalized uh, supersymmetry that I'm, I'm discussing with. Uh, with uh, two Peruvian uh, from Brazil, we also had a paper on the quaternionic and octonionic experience without supersymmetry, but the complete well, classification it is in chapter. And the last two papers, which may focus today, it's a uh, 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 last year paper in a chapter where uh, this the notion of holomorphic and Hermitian supersymmetry is produced. And the last paper is by um, a Russian PhD student uh, of, uh, in, in Brazil, Kuznetsova, in which we classify, fully classify this constraint generalized supersymmetry and apply, uh, and apply the to the superparticle with the tensor charges. Okay, so at first let me just uh, give you the mathematical setup, which is, uh, is from the 60s. And it's uh, based, of course, we need to introduce supersymmetry, but so we need to have spinos, we need to have uh, Clifford algebras, and there are results that go back from the classification of Atia, Bot, and Shapiro about the uh, uh, relation between division algebras and, uh, and Clifford algebras. In general, in general space times. And this relation can be uh, understood uh, very quickly, and uh, as the easiest way to understand is as follows. If you have some uh, division algebra, and if you have uh, these uh, elements which are expanded in a division algebra, so these are the generators of the division algebra, they are so called imaginary elements, and they are 1, 3, or 7 according to a complex quaternion of Octonionic number, so they satisfy such kind of uh, uh, such kind of relation, and these guys, these C I J K, are totally anti-symmetric structure constant. They are just epsilon I J K for quaternions, and there are some seven-dimensional structure constant for octonions. And if you take the anti commutator of them, you realize in fact uh, this kind of relation, which is nothing else than a re relation of uh, which looks like uh, a Clifford relation for a Euclidean, uh, Euclidean space uh, with the negative signature. And so this is the basic idea how you can implement the division algebra in this context of, of Clifford algebra. And we have a very uh, practical way to uh, produce all representative, explicitly all irreps of Clifford algebra with some two algorithmic procedure, which are just uh, given here in the in this bottom line. So let us start with some uh, given Clifford irrep in some given dimensional space time. You can uh, end up to produce Clifford irreps in D plus two dimensional space time simply taking a bigger matrix twice of this size uh, with uh, these two construction. The two construction, in fact, I just referred from uh, from a minus sign that you can transfer from one side to another. And if you do that, you end up producing this set of arrows, you see. So this, uh, this is kind of the algorithmic procedure. And each one is related with some of the basic elements. So you start from real contours and quaternions. Or in seven-dimensional Euclidean space, you can start either with the real or octonions. Octonions, of course, are are not associative, and you have two different uh, uh, set of constructions. And this is uh, how you can uh, control and take control of all this. What kind does this notation mean? Hmm? Parentheses, number, number, what are the numbers? Uh, these are, uh, okay, <coughs> so these are the um, 
PQ uh, space times with the, with the PQ signature, uh, P uh, positive and Q uh, negative. So if you have, uh, for instance, three uh, two one means uh, uh, in Kowski and an object has any dimension of the up uh, to uh, any dimension. Well, this is uh, on the first row. We have one, two, four, eight. That's the dimension of the. This is the size of a uh, Clifford Bell matrix in the irreducible oh. representation. And in fact, this formula also contains uh, all information about, I should mention, about oxidation. In the sense that uh, mm, oxidation is a pan uh, which is concrete of dimensional reduction. Uh, if you take, and I'll give you some explicit example, but uh, for instance, if you want to define a theory in five dimensions, uh, five dimensions, the real case is contained in 4, 3, so it's more natural to define the theory directly in 4, 3, and then to uh, Reduce all the result in, in form one. And this is uh, most under the, under the name of, of oxidation. So this is the maximum space time which allows it to define a theory with spinors of, of a certain kind. Francesco, but every big Q appears somewhere. Every big Q appears. The big Q that do not appear here, in fact, are just, uh, are just contained in the sense that, uh, for instance, let's say 4-2 uh, is just uh, contained from 4-3, um, just erasing one uh, of the other matrices that you have assumed to be external. So this is, uh, goes under this uh, oxidation or dimensional reduction. So everything is obtained uh, from this uh, from this set of tables. And something appears in different places. Hmm? And something appears in different places. So, uh, yes, we, we, well, but you have to take into, into account the, uh, the structure, the division algebra structure. You can have a real structure, you see, you can have complex or quaternary structure, and uh, it depends. And then uh, it depends on which kind of game you have to play. And the game that you have to play depends also uh, if you want to, uh, to take a Clifford algebra or fundamental spinors to be uh, to be the most uh, uh, important uh, basic unit, and the reason is that uh, Clifford algebra fundamental spinors uh, almost match the, their division algebra properties, but not always. And the reason why they do not always match is just if I, uh, due to the fact that uh, you have in some specific space time uh, you have the notion of by generalized by spinors. Uh, and you see, this is the, for associative case, here, this is the division algebra property of gamma matrices and spinors. And fundamental spinor can have half of the components of corresponding gamma matrices. Gamma matrices are just of anti block anti diagonal type, because when you take uh, with gamma matrices, have a representation of generalized Lorentz group done in this way. So fundamental spinor are just upper or lower component. And then uh, you can have some mismatch, which is presented in this, in this table. I should also mention that there exists a, a relation which is uh, almost obvious, but it's more complicated than that, between uh, Clifford algebras on one side and uh, one dimensional extended supersymmetries, where I go from 1 to n. So these are generator of a one dimensional uh, supersymmetrical quantum mechanics and extended. And uh, the relation goes, in fact, to this kind of structure that uh, you can realize the uh, one to one correspondence between Clifford represent by the representation of Clifford gamma matrices and, and extended supersymmetric quantum mechanics, where in one side you have capital D uh, is the dimensionality of this space, and capital N is the, is the uh, number of extended supersymmetry. And small d and small n represent just the size of the gamma matrices or the size of the multiplets uh, in, with n bosons and n fermions. There are some results in the one dimension that uh, all multiplets are, uh, can be shortened to some uh, given multiplet of, uh, of uh, where all bosons and all fermions are, uh, are associated to the, to the given uh, to a given spin. So all irreducible representation falls into this class of representation which are governed by these different uh, matrices. So this is a relation in one dimension and an extended SUSI. But uh, I would like just to discuss about uh, generalized supersymmetries. And you know the story of generalized supersymmetry well start from the Nogol theorem of Coleman Mandula, which was overcome by Hard Wokushansky Sonius basically 
by assuming to have a super algebra, super structure, like everybody knows here. But then this was not the end of the story. I think the first paper was in 82 by Daurian Frey. They point out that if you have uh, some supersymmetry algebra in the right hand side, you can have uh, uh, bosonic elements which are not necessarily uh, translation, and they are not uh, just uh, the direct uh, product of translation with some internal space like uh, in Capo Bouchard's Isonius. And uh, the reason why is quite clear. So if you have in 11 dimension, you can count that you have 32 components. So this matrix could be uh, the most general symmetric matrix, 32 times 32. And you have something like 528 uh, expected components. And if here you have just uh, the translation, you have only 11 components. But then you can ask what happens with the next one. And the next thing you know that if you expand with a higher rank tensor field, then you can feel precisely this, you can saturate this right hand side, and you have this kind of expansion. So this is the basic so-called M algebra. And since there exists an equivalence between Majorana spinor in 11 dimension and Majorana Val spinor in 12 dimension, the same kind of algebra you can also have from uh, F algebra viewpoint, where you still take uh, real spinors and you end up with some uh, structure of this type, where here you, have, you don't have translation, in fact, you have only a rank 2 antisymmetric tensor and a rank 6 self dual tensor, and uh, you have this kind of, the same kind of counting goes, goes this way. So this ZAD appear on the right hand side are abelian object. And uh, this you can always take as a, uh, as a building block for some superconformal algebra. You just take two copies of this algebra and you put together uh, by assuming uh, uh, Jacobi identities. And then you end up with some superconformal algebra which uh, even it can uh, op contain a super Poincare just with uh, some uh, inner type of construction. But this was just a simple kind of structure which it was based on real spinors. So what happens, so we show in the first transparency that uh, we don't only have of course a real spinor, but we can also have spinors which are complex, quaternionic, or even octonionic. So and if this is the case, in fact, we have uh, that uh, a single supersymmetric relation can be split in three different relations because we have uh, uh, at our disposal the conjugation which is called the principal conjugation in the given division algebra so you see that uh, uh, from a given single relation for real spinors uh, we can have three different relations because of course uh, uh, conjugation acting on real is just the identity but it's not the case when you have C, H and O and so we end up with this kind of structure where this matrix here is uh, should be symmetric in the exchange of A and B. And this one is just the conjugate matrix, so you don't have any new degrees of freedom because they discontain from here. But then you have a new matrix here, which is WAB, which is Hermitian in the exchange of A and B. And in fact, out of this, you can immediately realize that there are at least two set of compatible uh, constraints that you can impose on this algebra. One is to set up uh, all, all elements z equal to zero. So the only uh, degrees, of, well, only degrees of freedom left are contained in W. And this you can call, of course, Hermitian supersymmetry. Or the other way around is just to do the opposite, to set up W equal to zero and let only z different from zero. And then, there are, you can call the, this kind of uh, constraint the holomorphic supersymmetry. And this is quite, uh, quite trivial to compute for the whole set of space time supporting this kind of, this kind of supersymmetries, com complex and quaternionic, the number of bosonic degrees of freedom. And this number of bosonic degrees of freedom is given by this kind of table. So this is, uh, the, in the real case, of course, you don't have any distinction between symmetric and Hermitian because uh, uh, there is no uh, such kind of splitting. But you have this kind of splitting for complex and quaternionic case. And here you can end up uh, with this kind of, this list. And... Uh, I've not understood whether uh, 
these are two uh, uh, special uh, examples, or if there is some more general case in which both the Z and W. There are uh, more general cases, and I will uh, give you uh, a, a transparency last, where uh, all the set of division algebra constraints which are compatible with this supersymmetry can be given. But these are, for the moment, let us, let us focus on these two uh, special set of examples. And you see, um, there exists an interest because, uh, let, let, let me just point you uh, very briefly uh, one, one, one source of interest. Uh, if you take a uh, unit dimension and you have a 32 component real spinner, you end up with 528 bosonic uh, components in the right hand side. And this is the M algebra, which is a saturated M algebra because uh, this is the maximum number of bosonic components. And one question that you can ask is uh, what happens if you try to make Euclidianize this algebra and to go to Euclidian in a dimensional uh, space? Uh, we know the answer for standard, uh, st for standard theory, in Minkowskian theory in uh, 3 plus 1 and 4 dimension and for standard supersymmetry. So the question, which is a sensitive question, is what happens for M theory because, and then, of course, uh, if you want to use a, a formalism like a functional integral in this, in this context, uh, you need to define the theory in Euclidean. And already from this very, very silly, very stupid uh, table, you can uh, just figure out which is the answer. And the reason is simple, because in 11 dimension Euclidean, uh, spinners, in fact, are complex, uh, 32 components. Well, they, in fact, they are even quaternionic. But if you look at this set of tables here, you have to realize that the same number of bosonic components should be reproduced also in the in Euclidean case. You can allow to have a double uh, size of spinners, fermionic element, but uh, the, you should have the same number of bosonic components. And from this table here, you see immediately that the only possibility to match this 528, which is the, uh, the Nikoskian case, with uh, some number set up from, from here, is just to take uh, this element here and to implement some reality condition, which is uh, half of the degrees of freedom. And in fact, uh, you can prove that this is indeed uh, the, correct, uh, the correct prescription in order to have uh, some uh, uh, analytic continuation of the and algebra into the Euclidean. So, in fact, that you need to implement the so-called complex holomorphic supersymmetry with extra reality condition, and this is precisely the, the correct, the correct prescription. And so, this is one of the main motivations how why to study this constrained theory. And so, okay, so these are some typical examples of theories that you can. Uh, you can, uh, you can set up. You have different cases uh, according if you have uh, real spinners, complex spinners, or quaternionic spinners. Uh, and these cases are so this is uh, the basic division algebra spinners structure, and then also the, uh, how you represent them in real or in complex form. For instance, if you have quaternionic <coughs> spinners, you can represent it uh, either in real, in complex, or in quaternionic cases. And you can end up uh, describing this, this various set of uh, Hermitian or holomorphic, holomorphic Hermitian uh, uh, constraint that as I discussed uh, in the previous transparency. And you see, and you can also end up with some uh, isomorphism between the different constructions which are uh, represented by this level. This Just to give you some example, and this is also some, okay, I, I have in fact a complete set of tables which I will not present concerning oxidation, but I just give you some example how to, how to derive oxidation in various different cases. So let me just give you an example. Let us focus on the five dimensional space time with 4 1 signature. This can be, in the real case, can be contained in 4 3. And uh, in fact, uh, this, uh, you can have a seven dimensional viewpoint uh, where these are the bosonic set uh, which are uh, represented by uh, rank zero and rank three uh, element in the seven dimensional space time. And in the five, from a five dimensional uh, viewpoint, uh, they split up into this set of components where these are 
ob object here are uh, rank k tensor in the anti-symmetric tensor in third dimension, where the k rank k is 0, 2, 1, or 3. And so this, you have this kind of list of, 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 of the composition. And the similar case uh, you can do for complex uh, holomorphic and complex Hermitian supersymmetry, and you end up with this uh, kind of uh, this kind of table. Okay. Yeah. And at the end up, you can construct a series of a series of tables where which resumes uh, all the possible classification of uh, all these kind of supersymmetries. For instance, uh, so this is the big list of these. Uh, of this complex uh, uh, holomorphic uh, and uh, Hermitian uh, supersymmetry with complex spinors or with quaternionic spinors, uh, and uh, this is uh, if a Hodge duality is uh, satisfied uh, between uh, between uh, the bosonic uh, right hand side in the composition, and this is uh, the degrees of freedom, the bosonic degrees of freedom, if they are saturated or not, uh, according to the to the different cases. So this is the complete list. And I can give you some example, let's say. For instance, this is the list of whole quaternionic space-time supporting quaternionic spinors up to B plus 13. And for this, for the Hermitian type of supersymmetry based on quaternionic spinors, you can end up, which means for all this space-time, you can end up with uh, this uh, different uh, bosonic set uh, and with uh, this different uh, uh, number of bosonic uh, degrees of freedom. This is Hermitian polymorph, uh, Hermitian quaternionic supersymmetry. But you can also make the same for uh, complex holomorphic and quaternionic holomorphic supersymmetry, and you end up with this uh, kind of uh, with this kind of uh, with this kind of uh, This complex holomorphic uh, supersymmetry. Uh, interesting feature is this one, which is what I already recalled, uh, corresponds to the Euclidean version of uh, standard uh, and algebra. So this is complex holomorphic because this, uh, this works in the uh, Euclidean linear dimension. And it also works in Euclidean first dimension, which represents the Euclidean version of the F algebra, the analytical continuation of the F algebra realized in this way. And you can also amuse yourself to work out uh, what happens in the quaternionic holomorphic supersymmetry. And then you realize that in this case, uh, you do not have, in fact, uh, any uh, extended central charges. The only possibility uh, with uh, higher rank tensor and central charges, the only possibility is to have uh, just uh, uh, vectors uh, corresponding to translations, and at most uh, a single central charge. And this is the complete uh, set of table. It means, this means that this holomorphic quaternionic supersymmetry is very much, uh, very much uh, constrained and very much reduced. And through the famous uh, modulus eight uh, uh, multiplicity of, uh, of Clifford Max, you, this, the whole table can be resumed uh, very, very, very nicely in this, in this table. So, I want to just have some reminder that a similar kind of construction can be performed also for octonions, which are not, uh, which are not associative, but uh, nevertheless, uh, this definition of supersymmetric algebra can be performed and has some very striking, striking relation. The right hand side, since now instead of having 32 components, the real component, you have four components of autonomic element. So this means that the right hand side must be an autonomic emission matrix with uh, at most 52 components. And what is very interesting is that uh, you have a decomposition of the right hand side, which is precisely like the real case. So you have uh, vectors, rank 2 and rank 5 object. However, the counting is completely different due to the fact that you have at most 52 elements. You can really realize that uh, in the real case, these guys, these guys, and these guys are all independent. And it is absolutely not the case in the octonionic case, because already these 11 elements here 
sum with this element coming from here. And these elements are just 41 because it's just a 55 minus 14 coming from G2 automorphism of the octonius. This gives already the 52 elements which saturate the right hand side. And indeed, you can prove that this gas is this rank fiber, is nothing else, uh, contains 52 elements which are reproduced from here. So basically, this is something which works in the octonian level. You have the M5 sector is given by the sum of, is symbolically given by the sum of M1 and M2 sector. And this is something which is uh, completely, completely new. And uh, there is no real counterpart. This is just uh, becoming from octonians and from the fact that uh, you have uh, uh, a non-associative algebra. So, this is, okay, this is something about uh, this basic construction. Perhaps I'll give you later some more detail. But now I want just to, want, uh, just to present some transparencies about uh, the the general, uh, okay, the constraint complex supersymmetries uh, and how to, uh, how to classify all division algebra compatible constraint. So you can see from here that uh, you, we have these uh, uh, three set of, uh, three set of uh, basic, uh, uh, basic relation. Uh, they are uh, contained within this matrix P and P uh, star, which are symmetric, <coughs> and R, which are Hermitian. And the previous uh, Hermitian and holomorphic was just uh, some, uh, some only, only a part of, 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 of all these, uh, these uh, constraints. Because, in fact, you can realize the full table of constraints uh, P and R implementing this constraint with a reality or imaginary condition on P and R. So full means, of course, you don't have any constraint absent that you set equal to zero either R or, or P. And if you do that, you end up with a table of this type. This table is for a complex spinner and component complex spinner. And this gives you the total number of bosonic elements which are contained in this, in this table. And uh, here you can see the number of, of elements for all possible cases. I should say that the real and imaginary condition on P produce the same result, so, there is, so these two cases are not uh, distinguished in fact. So you have end up with uh, 3, 6, 9, and 12 possible, possible generalized, constrained generalized supersymmetries. And if you look uh, carefully at this table, you see that uh, uh, some of these numbers are repeated twice. For instance, this number and this one is the same. This and this coincide. This and this coincide. And also this and this coincide. And this suggests, in fact, that uh, uh, some of these constraints generalized supersymmetry admit a duality formulation. And this is indeed the, the case in the in the various uh, in these various. Are there no constraints from the covariant distance? I mean, it looks... Well, it, it, it is constrained because I can put uh, some division algebra constraint uh, on this right hand side. I can put the constraint uh, assuming that this to be real or imaginary. Or... Right, but but uh, maybe they, they would not be compatible with each other. And the uh, well, you see, uh, this is, uh, let, let's say, this is for me is the building blocks. So the, for the moment, you should assume this to be uh, a billion. Bosonic elements are uh, abelian. So if you take, uh, let's say, M algebra or generalization of M algebra, these are abelian bosonic elements. Then you can use this uh, uh, building block to construct some associative conformal algebra. How? Uh, I have some transparency if you wish I can switch, but uh, you just take two separate copies of them, you put together, and you, uh, you, um, you put together in, a, in, in such a way to satisfy Jacobi identity, and you end up with uh, some generalized superconformal algebra, which is, of course is based on the, on the given division algebra problem that put for your basic speakers. And with, with, when you have this generalized uh, superconformal algebra, it's easy to recover some uh, superquantum array. How? Simply taking uh, some uh, some limit uh, 
uh, as a, some contraction limit like uh, in all of in that type of contraction. So this is the basic ideology. So you can think of this as a building block for uh, all set of generalized supersymmetry. And so these are perfectly consistent from algebraic point of view. And you see here, I can give you the list of uh, dualities formulation. This is the number of uh, bosonic components. So I end up with seven, with a list of seven possible cases. And some of the, these cases admit that this uh, duality formulation, all these cases from, from, from three to six, uh, as here. And what are this number, k and l, where l goes from 0, 1, while k goes from 0 to 3? Well, this means that the bosonic right hand side can be split into this set. This capital Z is symbolically can be divided in kx plus l y, where x and y are fixed for any given dimension, and k can go from 0 to 3, and l go from 0 to 1. And so, symbolically, you have that for the different space time you have end up with this kind of thing. Well, this is x, in fact, and this is y. And you have several components of x and several components of y according to this kind of, uh, of this kind of table, which is given, which is given here, you see, for each one of these, uh, uh, these constraints. So, uh, one possible application of these, uh, the first the simplest dynamical application of this uh, algebraic setup concerns a class of model which is known as a superparticle model with tensorial central charges, and they have been introduced in, in the 80s, 85, 86, 87, no, sorry, in, in 95, 96, by Rubicev and Selsky in the context of real, uh, of real spinners. Actually, Rubicev and Setskin worked out for a, I don't know why, for a 2 2 uh, space time, but in fact, they can be generalized for any, uh, any space time. And the idea is simple the following to enlarge the set of, okay, you have this is a super particle, so you have bosonic coordinate and you have Grassmann variables, but in fact, the bosonic coordinates are not just a standard x mu uh, bosonic coordinates, you have also uh, higher rank of bosonic coordinates like x mu nu. And uh, these are just uh, uh, conjugated to the charges q and zeta, the bosonic charges z, z and uh, the, the spinorial charges q. And here you can write out this uh, 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 super particle action where in, in terms of uh, first order formalism, where e is just a set of the uh, multipliers. And uh, this Lagrange multiplier in fact tells you that you have a, a set of constraints which is just uh, z squared equal to, equal to zero, uh, which gives you some uh, massless constraint on this, on this particle. In fact, you don't need even to be part massless because if, uh, so this z squared is constructed with, uh, with, uh, with capital C, which is the charge conjugation matrix acting on spinor because this is uh, the metric for spinors is, uh, is given by this charge conjugation matrix. And if this is a uh, symmetric, <coughs> then you can uh, end up uh, with uh, some, uh, you can shift this Z in this way to add some uh, massive term also. But this is, was only if uh, this C is symmetric. So this depends on the, on the condition of, uh, of, of the given space task. So this kind of model was studied, was introduced by Rudy and Sestin. And Bandos and Lukiewski introduced at first a complex model which, was, which had a similar kind of feature but was based on complex spinors. And for a complex model, you have much more uh, freedom. You have to realize that uh, your spinors have to be uh, split into two parts. And so instead of having a single matrix, you have your uh, matrix has to be uh, divided into, uh, into two and two blocks, where P and P star are these uh, symmetric matrices that uh, enter this uh, uh, generalized supersymmetry, as I mentioned before, and R and R star are Hermitian matrices. And so everything has to be, uh, to be written in terms of these, uh, these pinners. Uh, complex and conjugate complex spinners in this way. 
So you have a, a, uh, an action which has meets this kind of form here in terms of this capital T basis, and this is just a, just a, this uh, just a conjugate momentum with respect to the to the standard of x and theta, and capital E is just a matrix of Lagrange multiplied. So for this kind of model, you have several type of construction that you can make. So it's a, you have a quite a large uh, possibilities. The first one is that to realize is that since now your spinors, basic spinors have a two uh, two main uh, two main set of indices undotted and dotted. So there are three possibilities to write, uh, to write uh, a charge conjugation matrix. So this is the first possibility, a charge conjugation matrix which only, uh, uh, is only a novation between undotted spinors or, or, or dotted spinors. Or uh, another possibility is to have a charge conjugation matrix which mixed the dotted and undotted spinors in terms of uh, so-called A matrix, which is uh, the equivalent of uh, gamma zero matrix in uh, general space-time. So, and you have this kind of set, uh, this possible matrix here. And the third possibility, you have some matrix which, uh, which was only for specific space-time according to the, uh, to the symmetric properties of, uh, of uh, charge conjugation matrix and matrix A given by this. And this is the third possible matrix that you have here. <coughs> So you have for this kind of model, you have these three possible set of, of construction, dynamical construction. <laughs> and then for each one of these possible uh, set of dynamical construction, you have to, uh, you have to uh, look if uh, you can indeed implement uh, this uh, constraint uh, supersymmetry. But if you remember from the previous transparencies, we had uh, seven possible cases of constraint supersymmetry. So seven possible cases times three possible choices for the, for the symmetrics. It means that we have at least 21, 21 cases that we should analyze. And this analysis, in fact, has been completed. completed. So we have the complete set of possible uh, <coughs> allowed uh, this kind of model super particle model with the tensor so charges have some sort of kappa symmetry? Hmm? Yes, of course. They have kappa symmetry. Does they have kappa something for the target space into the kappa symmetry? Yes, yes. But uh, this, so this is some, uh, but uh, this is already some sort of bosonic type of analysis. I should mention what is the interest of this kind of uh, this kind of model, which is the simplest type of models, perhaps the lambda setting, where you can implement this framework of generalized supersymmetry. Uh, they are uh, very much studied, uh, and it, it came in some sense as a, as a surprise. So they have been uh, introduced by Rubich and Sestin. Then, uh, in uh, in four dimension, four dimension with the six uh, uh, extra bosonic central charges, have been studied by Bandos and Kierski, and they saw the constraint coming from uh, uh, the Russian multiplier. And they realized, uh, as a surprise, that when solving this constraint, uh, the dynamical content of the model they were analyzing, they didn't expect it to be that, uh, was just a model of uh, a tower of a massless particle with a given uh, velocity, given by, uh, separated by integer and uh, half integer speed. So this means that this kind of model realizes a tower of a massless particle of higher, of higher speed. And this is something uh, which goes to, it's the first dynamical implementation of a, of a proposal given by Fronsdal to use uh, the x nu nu coordinates to realize a compactification which is not just a Kaluza triangle compactification, but a compactification in the momentum space. So this kind of model are quite uh, interested now because of uh, um, the possibility of formulating uh, string theory in the in the in the special in the special limit in the special ultra relativistic limit where the Planck mass is set equal to zero. So you end up with a theory of a massless massless particle, but of high, a tower of higher spin. And uh, mm -hmm. 
things and can attention as things. Yes. I mean, uh, so this is in fact, uh, this is the dynamical content of this kind of model is uh, reproduced in this, uh, this, for this kind of super part type of theory. And uh, so this is quite interesting, of course, because there are uh, several groups that uh, are assuming, are advocating the point of view that uh, uh, perhaps uh, one easiest way to formulate uh, uh, string field theory is to work uh, with this, uh, uh, this conformal theory, which is uh, correspond to this uh, centerless, uh, uh, with this, uh, with this uh, state uh, tower of uh, massless higher states, uh, and then to assume that in some way uh, this conformal theory could be spontaneously broken. So this is a first type of example. Another type of theory, which is uh, generalization of that, uh, is, uh, uh, has been constructed by uh, Jean Tukin in terms not of superparticle, but uh, in terms of superstring, with uh, this kind of, based on these uh, organic uh, central charges, external, external central charges. And so this is uh, one of the next uh, type of uh, dynamical application of this kind of theory that uh, we should uh, investigate uh, uh, very soon. And then there exists another type of theory which is in some sense ortho orthogonal to that and they correspond to the so-called higher dimensional charge sign. They are orthogonal because this kind of theory are tower of higher spin going from 2, 3 in the bosonic set of 2, 3, 4 and up to at n to infinity, while Charles Simon, uh, higher dimensional Charles Simon supergravity, uh, are theories which are formulated in terms of superalgebra, so they fit very nicely this kind of, this kind of framework. In terms of, they are formulated in terms of uh, higher order invariants of, uh, and, and, and higher order invariants according to the dimensionality of space time. Uh, but the dynamical content of this theory is just uh, up to spin to spin to spin to particle. And so this is also another class of model which should be very okay. And so this is, uh, this is still uh, some uh, uh, open, open problem and uh, open challenge. Because if this would be the case, uh, you could, uh, in principle, construct uh, all possible uh, one-dimensional and extended supersymmetric invariant. Of course it is known, but it is known only for very lower, uh, 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 very, uh, the lowest level of uh, n equal 1, 2, and 4. 
because in this case you can use uh, uh, superfield formalism. In n equal in d equal one dimension, superfield formalism. N equal two formalism or n equal four uh, superfield formalism with the harmonic superspace. But uh, unfortunately, you cannot go beyond this n equal four uh, uh, n equal four manifest uh, supersymmetry. And one possibility to go beyond is just to use this information which is contained in this uh, in the in the in the in, in the classification of irreducible multiplet of an extended supersymmetry. So there are we worked this with uh, Tonya Pashnev uh, and we end up with this classification, but we didn't have at the time uh, idea how to construct the invariants for this uh, higher uh, n extended. There are some uh, proposals which uh, they are not uh, some classificatory proposals. There are just some construction method which has been uh, has been developed by Gates uh, and his uh, collaborators. So with some uh, uh, fancy way of, of constructing diagram. I don't know if it is uh, really needed uh, for this kind of for this kind of purpose. But uh, this is definitely a very interesting uh, mathematical problem which is still open. How to construct invariant? Uh, for n extended supersymmetries. Uh, of course, you know, in some particular cases, you know, I mean, you can construct a super yield theory in uh, equal 10, you can freeze a full nine space time dimension, and you end up with uh, some, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with uh, a theory with n in, in d equal 1 with n equal 16 supersymmetry, or if you took with the uh, maximum supergravity with n equal 32, of course, you this is guaranteed, but how to construct uh, how to construct uh, uh, an extended supersymmetric line? This is a really a very interesting open challenge. Thank you.